I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to a president who has stood without apology for the sanctity of human life and for the freedom of religion of every American of every faith. Beyond all of that, throughout all of the last three and a half years, this president and this administration have stood with the men and women of law enforcement, and we will stand with them every day. Now, President Trump and I know that the men and women who serve in law enforcement are the best of us. They put their lives on the line every single day. They literally count our lives as more important than their own. And they deserve the respect of every American. Now, to be clear, any incident involving the police use of force will always be thoroughly investigated. But there is no excuse for the rioting and looting that we have seen in Kenosha and in cities across the country. And this violence against civilians, against property, and against law enforcement must stop, and it must stop now. Now, President Trump and I will always support the right of Americans to peaceful protest. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Burning businesses is not free speech. And those who do so will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. That's why President Trump took action just a few days ago. We sent 200 federal law enforcement officers into Kenosha. Working with the National Guard and local law enforcement, we quelled the violence. Under this president, I promise you, we will have law and order in every city in this country for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us God. Now, for months, all Joe Biden talked about was peaceful protesters as the American people watched businesses and communities in our major cities burn. Last week, Joe Biden, after three months of silence, spoke out against violence in every form it takes. But right after he said that, he criticized law enforcement. And Joe Biden never condemned Antifa. He never called out his campaign staff or his running mate for raising money to bail out violent criminals. And he never called on Democrat mayors to get their cities under control. And I think people here in Wisconsin know Joe Biden would double down on the policies that have literally led to violence in our major American cities. And Joe Biden says America is systemically racist and that law enforcement has an implicit bias against minorities. When asked whether he supported cutting funding to law enforcement, Joe Biden replied, yes, absolutely. But under President Donald Trump, I promise you, we will always stand with those who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement. We're not going to defund the police, not now, not ever. Now, President Trump and I know what you all in Wisconsin know. We don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and standing with our African-American neighbors and families to improve the quality of their lives, to improve public safety, create more jobs and better schools. And from the first day of this administration, we've done both. And I promise you, we're going to keep supporting law enforcement and keep supporting our African-American neighbors and all the minorities in every community in this city every day from here to come. So in three short years, with the support of the people of Wisconsin, we rebuild our military, we revive our economy, we stood for our liberties and for law and order. And the result? I can tell you, having traveled to more than 30 countries as your Vice President, America is respected in the world again. 
at home, our God-given liberties are more secure today. And in our first three years, there's only three ways you can describe those years. It was jobs, 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 right here in Wisconsin and all across the world. And with less taxes, less regulation, more American energy and better trade deals, businesses large and small across this country created more than 7 million good-paying jobs in just three years. And on this Labor Day, it's, it's great to remember that, that wages were rising in those first three years. Wages were rising at their fastest pace in the last decade. And we couldn't be more proud that in those first three years, wages rose most rapidly for hard-working, blue-collar Americans. The forgotten men and women of America are forgotten no more. And under this president's policies, manufacturing has come roaring back. You know, when Joe Biden was vice president, America lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. And the last president actually said that those jobs were never coming back. Do you remember? It was the summer, four years ago, 2016. The president back then wondered aloud how you could ever bring manufacturing back to the heartland. He said, quote, what magic wand do you have? Well, we didn't need a magic wand. We just needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs in just three years. Beyond that, the lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for African Americans and Hispanic Americans. At the end of our first three years, more Americans were working than ever before. And let me just say, with, with him present here today, none of that would have been possible without the strong and principled support of Senator Ron Johnson. Wisconsin, would you join me? Get on your feet and show how much you appreciate a man that's been fighting for Wisconsin values and fighting for Wisconsin jobs. Thank you, Senator Johnson. With our strong allies in the Congress like your Senate, we created the greatest economy in the world in three short years. We made America great again. And then the coronavirus struck from China. The people of Wisconsin deserve to know that before the first case of coronavirus spread from person to person within the United States, President Trump took the unprecedented step of suspending all travel from China before the month of January was out. And I can tell you, having led the White House Coronavirus Task Force, that action alone saved untold American lives. And it bought us invaluable time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. direction, we marshaled the full resources of the federal government and the American economy. We partnered with private industry, reinvent testing. When I took over the task force in late February, we'd done no more than 8,000 tests total nationwide for the coronavirus. Today, with American ingenuity and high relief, we perform more than 800,000 coronavirus tests a day. We work with private industry to arrange for the production and the delivery of billions of supplies of personal protective equipment to our great doctors and nurses and hospitals all across America. We saw the delivery of those supplies at the point of the need in one city after another, where the impact was the greatest, where the challenge was the greatest. And I will tell you here in Wisconsin all across America, Every American should be grateful for our doctors, our nurses, and our health care workers and our first responders who have risen to the challenge in this hour. 